things. I must apologize for the abrupt end to our last program. We experienced some technical difficulties, but we're up and running now, so let's go. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we will pick up somewhat where we left off at the last class. We started looking at parts of speech more in depth. We had looked at nouns and the different types of nouns. So today, and we had started looking at pronouns before we had the technical difficulty. And we had said that pronouns take the place of nouns. And we had started looking at the types. I think that was when the show ended. So we are going to pick up right there by looking at the different types of pronouns and then we'll move from there and go into adjectives. Hope this will be a fun learning experience. Let's go. So we did say that pronouns replaced nouns. Let me see if you're seeing my board well. Okay, so we say that pronouns replace nouns and we have different kinds of nouns, sorry, different kinds of pronouns. Okay, we have possessive pronouns. So just as how we have possessive nouns, we do have possessive pronouns. In addition, we have personal pronouns. We have reflexive, we have demonstrative. And these ladies and gentlemen are just a few. As we move on, we will look at others. So possessive nouns, as we said in the last class, are nouns that show ownership. For example, Dawn, if this belongs to Dawn, then we would say Dawn apostrophe S. So the apostrophe S shows ownership. However, when we're dealing with pronouns, it is much different. So possessive pronouns, you'll meet his, hers, mine, yours, ours, theirs, and ever so often, theirs, ever so often, persons confuse this possessive pronoun with the other word, T-H-E-R-E. -E. We will get into that at another time, but for now, just identifying that when we talk about possessive pronouns, we're talking about ownership. Then we look at personal pronouns. I, first one, the most dominant one. And I will reiterate, Whenever we're writing and we're using the personal pronoun I, it should always be capitalized. Once it stands alone, it should always be capitalized. So personal I, me, we, us. And these are pronouns that normally give you the point of view. Whenever you read a story, these are the pronouns that generally give you, or I wouldn't want to say hint, it, it gives you the point of view, the perspective from which the story is told. We know that if we, if we see the word, I oftentimes appearing, we know that the narrator is somebody who is actively involved in the story. So I am involved in the story and I am telling the story. I hope you're seeing the board clearly. Okay, 
then we have reflexive. When we talk about reflexive pronouns, when we talk about reflexive pronouns, we're actually talking about pronouns such as, let me, I am slipping here, guys. We're generally talking about pronouns that indicate a person or thing that is involved in something. For example, and these words, these pronouns generally have self. One of the easiest things, one of the easiest ways to remember is that they have self on them or selves. For example, itself, himself, myself, or selves. Okay, demonstrative. You know, let me not look at demonstrative yet. Let me look at intensive because intensive somehow goes with reflexive. Okay, so intensive pronouns usually add emphasis to a pronoun that is already used. It is, we may say it is somewhat redundant, but as it suggests, emphasis. So yes, you would have the reflexive, the reflexive pronouns. So you would have something like, I, myself, saw when he stole the purse. So it, if you look at it in essence, this here, the myself, it is not, it is, we could say it is irrelevant in the, in the sentence. However, for emphasis, so scenario, I am on the witness stand and I'm being cross-examined by, by the lawyer for somebody. And they're saying, no, I, I could not have seen when he stole the purse because whatever and whatever. And I said, yes, I saw when he stole the purse. And somebody may be saying, but Miss Dawes, X, Y, Z. And I said, I myself, I myself saw. So the myself here is usually for emphasis. So intensive, remember, intensive. It's just like intensive care. When you go into the intensive care unit, you know you, you need extra care. So let's, let's recap now, because we have more to look at, you know. So let's recap. Possessive pronouns, some examples. We have his, we have hers, mine. Oh my, I have your, I'm sorry. I should have had yours. You see, it shows I'm human, we make mistakes. Okay, so possessive, his, hers, mine, yours, ours, theirs, and so on. And so we can, we can go ahead and we can form examples. Sorry, I don't have a bigger board, but let's see how best we can squeeze, we can squeeze in some examples. So possessive, first one. This, this bag is his. So you may say, whose is this? This bag is his. And then we, when we get to demonstrative pronouns, we're gonna mix it up with this a little. Okay, so we have his there. Or another one, his. Father bought a car. Okay. And then hers. 
And then we could have, this book is hers. We would not say hers father, something like that though. No, it would be totally grammatically incorrect. Okay, then mine. This is mine. Yours, this is yours. Ours, um, or we could say our. Our father went fishing. Um, the house that sits on top of the hill is ours, theirs. These, these pencils are theirs or these pencils belong to them. Same message. Okay, so let me erase this because we saw the examples. Let's look at personal. Personal, I don't think I need to delve into this because it's pretty straightforward, right? I think so too. I, me, we, us. One of the things we need to remember when we're looking at the personal pronouns, we have the singular and we have the plural. Okay, so we know that I and me, singular. We and us, plural. Because we know that singular is one. Me here is one. We have he or she, singular. But when it comes on to plural, we know it's more than one. So we have we and we have us. Now, we need to know that when we're writing, especially for those persons who have gotten to the point of writing paragraphs, writing some sort of extended writing, we need to be careful in using our points of view, whether we're using our singular, this or this, or we're using our plural right there. And when you get around to story writing, that's one of the things that your assessors will look for. If you're asked to use the first person singular, then you know I or me. If first person plural, we or us. Third person singular, he or she. Plural, they or them. All right. So we move on to reflexive. So we did those two. We are looking at reflexive. So an example of reflexive, the man, wet himself. when stopped by the police. Now, he is so afraid of the police, yes. So the man, and we have himself being here, or the man himself, we could take that out, or the man himself was stopped by the police. If we say the man himself was stopped by the police, do we get some amount of emphasis coming out there? Yes. So if we have the man, you see how, how simply you change it from reflexive to in intensive? If you say the man wet himself when stopped by the police, fine, reflexive, we have the himself here, himself. We have the himself there. But if we take this out, take out wet and change the when to was. Ta-da! So the man himself was stopped by the police. So you realize now that when we're using the intensive, as outlined before, if you should take that reflexive pronoun out of the sentence, it would just 
it would make sense by itself, but it is in there. And when it goes in that sentence, it becomes reflexive. It makes, it becomes intensive. It makes more sense, more emphasis, I should say. So the man, notice, the man was stopped by the police, simple. Okay, so that takes care of these four. I think I can erase. Okay. I just hope we're having a good day so far. So we're going to continue and we're going to look at interrogative. Now, speak truth. How many persons knew that you had so many different types of pronouns? Okay, I love the honesty. Okay, interrogative. You see, you, you, you may think because I'm here and you're there, I'm not hearing you, I'm not seeing the honesty, but never mind, I can read minds even from this distance. Okay, so we have interrogative. Remember when we were looking at types of sentences, we also looked at interrogative sentences. So then this is a dead giveaway, right? So we have interrogative, we have demonstrative. Uh, am I missing out any other? Let me see. We have relative and we have indefinite. Okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, interrogative. When you think about an interrogative pronoun, what comes to mind? You're right. It is used to form questions. I mean, any simple, any simple pronouns that form questions, just think of them as being Interrogative. Who, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? You remember that game? Zoom, what is it? Zim, 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 I'm stagly. Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? What's the pronoun there? You're right. Who? I remember this game. Zim, zim, zim. I'm Stagley. Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Number one. Yeah. All right. So who? No. I'm going way ahead of myself. I should have given you the list first before we started looking at examples. I'm running way ahead of myself. My apologies, my humblest apologies. So we have who, we have whose, we have whoever, we have whichever, among others, among others, okay? Then we have demonstrative. When you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, there are simple demonstrative pronouns that we take for granted every single day. These are this and that, these and those. Four, four yes, yeah, sometimes I have a problem. Yeah, four. Four simple words, this and that, these and those. Don't forget this. Okay, so this and that, these and those. Relative, relative pronouns. What are, did I tell you what demonstrative pronouns are? Yes, these are the examples, but demonstrative pronouns, as the name suggests, demons, and we're not talking about demonstrations, no, you know, like um, January 6th or when you burnt iron block road, things like that. We're talking about 
All right, for example, we demonstrate, we, we, we show, for example, um, may I have this? So if, if somebody's in another room and I'm saying, um, Jennifer, may I have this? Jennifer has no idea what I'm talking about. Evidently, it, this is something that she will have to come and look at so that she can see to say, okay, yes, you may have it or no, you may not have it. Okay, and then we are going to look at relative pronouns. And we say that relative, relative pronouns are used at the beginning of, of minor, what's the correct name? Subordinating clauses, or we call them dependent clauses. So it's basically, they, they basically fall in other categories too. So you have words like who, you have words like which, you have words like that. Let me see, whatever, whichever, whenever, whoever, words like those. And I will give you examples. Indefinite now. Indefinite, let me talk to you, right. Indefinite is, as it suggests, indefinite. It is, it's like there is no end. It's like, it can be anybody. For example, if I say, no, I, I want to give you examples before I actually give you a list of them, right? Someone. Okay, think about it. If I say someone is knocking at the door, remember that song, somebody's knocking at the door, somebody's ringing my bell, okay, all right, yeah. So if I say someone, I am not speaking to a specific individual. It would be, it can be anybody, and that's why it's specific, um, anything. It can be anything, as it says, so it is, it is not specific, okay. We're gonna get deeper into this. So let me give myself some space here because I think we're gonna have more fun with the examples here. Okay, so we had started off with interrogative. All right, here's an example. Whomever Whomever, I'm trying to think of a sentence, guys. No, uh -uh. the sentence that is in my mind would need a word at the, to who, all right? Yeah, to whom does this belong? To whom does this belong? And you see, okay, yes, you're seeing, and you see the pronoun coming out here. Another example. Another example. Whose? Whose car? is parked in my spot. You know, some persons are very territorial about their parking spot. So right there, we have example. Examples, okay. Uh, let me see if I, can, if I can mix the interrogative with the demonstrative here for an example. For number three. Let's, let's see if we can mix the, as I said before, the interrogative with 
the demonstrative and come up with, we're, you know, we're gonna use one of each in the sentence. Uh, see, we have it right here in number one. We have who and we have this. Good, all right. To whom does this belong? But in essence, guys, this sentence would be an interrogative sentence. The mere fact, one, it's asking a question, and the focus of this right here is the subject and the article. To whom does this, not subject, object, subject and the object, to whom does this belong? All right, so relative, relative. Mm. And we say that the relative, the relatives, it, it, what it actually does, it actually modifies a, 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 um, a noun or a pronoun within that sentence. Let me show you. Let me show you. The man who's 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 the man who's a bit distracted. Okay, so the man who is seated was the, 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 the plaintiff. That's the only word that comes to my head right now. So the man who is seated was the plaintiff. So we realize that if we should erase this part here, who is seated? Are you seeing it? Right. So the man, take this out, who is seated was the plaintiff. The man was the plaintiff or the man is the plaintiff. So right here, notice we have who. So you find that the relative pronoun nine times out of 10, if not at all times, it starts the subordinating clause, the dependent clause, because who is seated? It does not say anything by itself, but what does it do? It gives you more information about the man. So it modifies the rest of the sentence. Okay. Okay, so yes, right there, we can do Two more examples. Okay, so we're going to do, we have interrogative, demonstrative, relative, and indefinite. We are going to do indefinite. One more example of the indefinite. Let me see, someone, I gave you some examples already. Let me use one of the, let me use one that is not up there. Okay. Everyone seem to be angry at the turn of events. I don't know why I'm writing this long sentence. Everyone seemed to be angry at the turn of events. Right there, it, I, I hope I am, I'm going slow enough for, for it to be understood, but 
not too slow or I hope I'm not going too fast where we're missing it out. So everyone here is the indefinite. Let's look at another one. There are, there are, there are very few people I trust. Okay, and can you tell me what the what the indefinite pronoun is here? And please do not tell me it's people. Yes, you are correct. Few. Because even though, I mean, I think Jamaicans have the best concept of few. Because a Jamaican will walk up to you and say, um, give me a few of your mangoes, no? And you know you cannot give him one. If you give him, if you give that person three mangoes, they are fine. And if you give them a dozen mangoes, they are fine. So few, we just know that few is not one. I think Jamaicans have the best concept of, of that word few there. Um, another one, last one. Most, most, uh, most teachers, are you seeing it? Yes, most teachers love to read. I don't believe this is true 100%, but to some extent. So most teachers love to read. And yes, again, we're looking at pronouns. So we know that it cannot be teachers. So yes, most, because most, when we talk about most here, it is indefinite because in a case where we're talking about 10, most can be nine. When we talk about, when we're looking at a hundred, most can be 99, it can be 80. It, it is somewhat unexplainable because it's not definite as I think that's, that's easier said, it's not definite. And now this is the point where had we been in a classroom, I would have said to you, okay, let's get to work. These are some exercises that you're gonna have to do on your own. But because we're not in the classroom, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on. And this is also the time that the floor would be open for questions, whether you want more examples, if you want me to re-explain something or something like that. So let's move on. So now, let me see if we have covered, if we have covered that aspect of it. Okay, so we looked at, before we move on, we looked at types of pronouns. We looked at reflexive. We looked at relative. We looked at indefinite. We looked at demonstrative. We looked at possessive. Okay, we looked at possessive. We looked at, we also looked at interrogative. Uh, this is where you would remind me, what else am I, am I missing? Uh, intensive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Uh, okay. So we looked at these seven. I, if I'm missing any, you would have gotten it. So let's move on. So we're going to go now to looking at adjectives. Okay. We're looking at adjectives. And we did say that adjectives are describing words. They tell us something more about a noun. Simply put it, let me see. Are we seeing? Simply put, it modifies, modifies a noun. Okay, so we have one of the first things we can remember, we have degrees of comparison. Adjectives that speak to degrees of comparison. So, you know, when you have, you have the, hold, colder, coldest. I wonder if we remember having done these way back in school. Okay, so we have, let me, let me refresh my memory here. We have positive, we have comparative, and we have the superlative. Uh -huh. And we call that degrees of comparison. Degrees of comparison. This is one of the things that we, we need to pay attention to in order to avoid things like redundancy in our, in our statements. Ever so often, and I can tell you, my husband always tries to, to pull me in when we go anywhere because I, I, I have this eye where I will see I will go into a building and I'll see somebody put up a notice and the grammar is just off and it just does something to me. I just want to go and correct it. And even when, you know, Jamaicans have this thing, when them say, yeah, man, that more better man. And every time I hear somebody using more and better in the same sentence, it just does something to me because I'm saying, these are things that we would have learned from primary school. So in order to avoid things like redundancy in our, in our, our statements, these are things that we need to pay attention to. Anyway, so we, we, we have, as I said, degrees of comparison. We have the positive, comparative, and the superlative. Okay, so we know that the comparative, yes, you got it right. Two, we're comparing two things. Superlative, more than two. For example, you realize how this takes up like all of the board? Never mind. For example, um, we have cold, colder, coldest. But let's look at another one. Let's look at beautiful. Would we say for the positive, beautiful, comparative, beautifuler? Mm -mm, mm -mm. You know, she's beautifuler. Never heard it before. She's beautifulest. Never heard it before. One of the things we need to pay attention to whenever we, we are looking at a word, an adjective, where it has two or more syllables, then we're going to use words such as much and more. So, no, oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry. I 
I did I have much and more humblest apologies. Luckily, I saw it in time. We're going to have more and most. So, for example, for example, let me squeeze it right here. Let me squeeze it right in this box here. Daisy is B E A U beautiful. But Mary is more beautiful and Dawn, I have to be conceited here, guys, is the most beautiful. Okay, so what you notice here, we have one person is beautiful. When we're looking at Daisy and Mary, we have more beautiful because we're, we're, we're talking about two. So Mary is more beautiful than Daisy. Of the three, Dawn is the most beautiful. See that? Ta-da! Okay. So remember, when we're... When we're Think about an adjective that has two or more, most times, in, in most cases, I can't think of any, any right now that would differ. You may have, but right now I just can't think of it. So when you have adjectives that have two or more syllables, you use more and most, okay. Can we move on now? I think so too. So let me give myself some space. So remember right there, we just looked at degrees of comparison. Uh, you know, let me put it right back there. Let me put it here. Degrees of comparison. Yeah, stay right there. Okay. Do you know also that we have demonstrative adjectives? Yes. These and those are examples. They indicate the noun. Just as it, it, it's basically like, it's basically like when we were looking at the pronouns before. You also, have, so let me just stop them down here. You have interrogative. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, guys, you see, once you know your parts of speech and you understand how the parts of speech work and you know how to use them, basically, you shouldn't have a problem writing and expressing yourself. So, because it's like, I may, I may be making an error in saying this, but it's like once you... You understand one, you understand all. Okay, you also have demonstrate. Oh, did I tell you about interrogative? Interrogative, which, which do you want? Which do you desire? You have demonstrative, because I had said demonstrative before. All right, let's look at adjectives of, by the way, are we aware, let me put it here, before we, quantity. Are we aware that numbers are adjectives? I, I, let me see because I, yeah, that's much better. I come here and I come here still. Okay, so we have quantity. We have a little, we have a few, we have a lot. Also, do you know that colors are adjectives? Um, the, the, the lady was wearing a dress 
how do we know what kind of dress she's wearing? She's wearing a blue dress, all of those things. So let me see what else am I, am I missing out? We have number, we have quantity, we have, let me see, am I missing any? Can't think of any that I'm missing. All right, so we looked at that one, demonstrative, it's basically the same. All right, so let's, let's get deep into looking at, we're just gonna go through like about, just a few examples of adjectives and pronouns that we have been through. I have a list, a list of sentences here. Okay. I have a list of sentences here. So you let yourself. All right. This is revision before we end class. Let me put quantity on this side. So I have that side to write on quantity. Okay. So we divide the board in two. So we're revision for we're doing revision for our end of semester next week. All right, good. All right. So let's start off with reflexive, reflexive pronouns. All right. No, I shouldn't have told you. You know, I should have just written them. All right. The girl was hit by the car. All right. Uh, is making Such a loud noise in the hallway. Uh, I never said that. Uh, David, we're, we're, we're doing the pronouns and the, the adjectives together, guys. David is than his brother. Uh, all right. One, two, three, four, one more, make it even. One that is not up there yet. One that is not up there yet. Let me see. All right, so five, five, I thought I had this where I could be seen all the way, right. So five examples here. So we are now going to decide which pronoun or which adjective goes into which sentence. And we're also going to identify if it's a case that the sentence is a, um, it's a, we're using the pronoun, we should also then be able to identify which pronoun it is. So let's look at number one. What would we put right there? The girl dash was hit by the car. What makes sense to me would be the girl herself. And if we're going to say the girl herself was hit by the car, then we know that it is intensive. Remember we said that 
In this case, it is used to add emphasis. I remember I said intensive, like you go to the intensive care unit. All right. So number two. So yes, we got number one right. Let's look at number two. Dash is making such a loud, yeah, start over, tripped over my tongue there. So Dash is making such a loud noise in the hallway. And notice there's a question sign at the end. Question sign, which is also called a stop sign at the end. So right there, we know that it is asking a question. So we know it is interrogative. So we want to put an in, and we are looking at pronouns here. So we want to put an interrogative pronoun right here. We would not say whose. And if we want, if we, if we even say whoever, it would not be a question then. It would be a statement. It's like, whoever is making such a loud noise in the hallway. Not really a question. But if we say who, which is the simplest form there is, we know right away that's an interrogative pronoun. Good job. Moving along. Mm. Number three. What do you think about number three? I would say I never said that. What could we add there? I guess we have... We have another intensive. Mm. You know, I never meant to have another another intensive. All right, but we're gonna work on it. So I myself, I myself never said that. See, with attitude, you say, "Oh, I never said that," which is fine. But I myself never said that. More emphasis. Then. David is dash than his brother. So right away, we know that we are, we are up here. We're looking at adjectives now. We are doing a comparison. So David is, this, we don't know, we don't know what is there. So it opens the world to a whole lot of adjectives. We could say David is smarter than his brother, but one thing we do know, there's one dash, so, we don't want any of those comparative that has more. So it can be David is smarter than his brother. David is taller than his brother. David is cuter than his brother, something like that. But when I was writing it, I had taller in mind. So David is taller than his brother. And this one here, what do you think that last one is? I have dash marbles in my jar. And we know right away it has to be an adjective in it. Hmm. Do we want to do numbers? Or do we want to do colors? Or do we want to do quantity? Remember I told you that all of those are adjectives. So I have red marbles in my jar. Right there, yeah. So right there, the, the red is describing the marbles. All right, however, that's not what I had in mind when I wrote it. I have many marbles in my jar, okay. I don't know about you, but I had fun this evening. So guys, I hope from all of this, me and my excited self, you would have gathered something from it. So it has been fun and see you next time. This is your host, Dawn Dawes, signing out. Have a good evening.